All right, so our new um, content series here at the Vikings Entertainment Network, On the Line, we've had a lot of fun with it. We've had a lot of good guests, and that's going to continue today. So um, if you've missed it, make sure you go back and check out the past ones. Adam Schefter uh, has joined us. We've had Ross Tucker on the line with the Vikings Entertainment Network. The quality guests continue today because it's Adam Kaplan who's going to join us today to talk a little Vikings offseason plan. Adam is an NFL insider. I like to listen to him on Sirius XM NFL Radio, where he does a great job with uh, some of the other hosts and analysts in that network. You can also catch Adam on Twitter, at Kaplan. That's with a C, at Kaplan NFL on Twitter. Hi, Adam. Well, I'll be good to talk to you as we... uh... We're not too far from free agency now. Uh, we're actually technically less than a month away, so we uh, we look forward to that. We've got the combine, mm-hmm. where I'm sure I'll see you and Paul Allen, and then uh, we've got the owners' meetings. It's it's a, this is the this is what we call the business season of the National Football League. The fall is uh, when they put everything together, but right now is uh, the, the business season. Well, when you take a look at our team, Adam, the Minnesota Vikings, you know, with with an off season in front of them, obviously last, uh, you know, I think last off season it was about the quarterback signing Kirk Cousins. This off season, what's it going to be about for the Minnesota Vikings, in your view? Yeah, well, I, mean, I think it's going to be helping the quarterback in terms of who's going to be in front of him. We're talking about the offensive line. That that to me is is a going to be a big part whether the Vikings are a playoff team or not a playoff team. Obviously, it went down the last week; they didn't get in. But we, we, I think when we really look at it, it it's, it's a situation. If everybody's healthy, remember Nick Easton was not healthy. He's a free agent. I'm, I am told they want him back. We'll, we'll see if they can do that. But it's, just, it's, it's getting upgrades on the offensive line because the defense, they've drafted so well, and the coaches have done such a great job of developing the defense. That that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is on offense, specifically how they protect Kirk Cousins and just making sure that they protect him well they saw him at his best when he gets out of the hands, the ball out of his hands quickly. What he doesn't think about it when he's accurate, he's as good as anybody. But it's how they protect him. I think that's to me the number one challenge for this front office is making sure that they upgrade the offensive line. Mm-hmm. You know, with um, with the addition of Gary Kubiak and and Rick Dennison, uh, working with offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski, not just on the offensive line, but you're right that that's going to be a focus. How do you see all that working out with the additions of Kubiak and Dennison? Those those are you know two guys, Adam, that I'm sure you've been around, um, you know, during your time covering the league. Those, those two guys are well respected coaches. So what's your perspective on the addition yeah. there? You're right, Wabi. So Dennison is a run game designer. He's actually really good at it, and that's where I think that Dennison will help them. There's no question about it. And Gary Kubiak is someone who could mentor Kevin. Uh, who's done it. You're talking about one of the better offensive coordinators, Gary Kubiak, in the last 20 years or so. Uh, Wherever he's been, Baltimore, obviously Denver. Denver is a head coach. Houston, wherever he's called plays, he just is really good at it. And it it fits in with with, what head coach Mike Zimmer wants, that commitment to the run. It's run game design. Kevin is a new offensive coordinator from a full-time standpoint. We know he did it for a handful of games last season. So now Stefanski's got a job on his hands. And I, I... I think this is going to be a very interesting kind of mix of new coaches and how they go about uh, scheming up the offense here because the, the talent level at wide receiver is terrific. We know that, though they need some depth. And with Dalvin Cook, you know, knock on wood that he's healthy because when he's healthy, he's, he's dynamic. Mm-hmm. If, you, if you have the, the, that talent that we just talked about and you get the offensive line upgraded in a significant way, this offense is going to take off. It's got to, it, it has the opportunity if the offensive line... Uh, is is upgraded from a talent standpoint. It, this you're talking. You're talking. I think um, with Stefanski, as we said, and who's a good young mind, and with with Kubiak helping out and uh, good good offensive coaching staff. This is a top ten, a top twelve offense overall, if you ask me. Yeah, and, and hopefully that's what it turns out to be because you pair that with with Mike Zimmer's defense, and you should have a team that's pretty hard to beat. Speaking of that defense, last uh, last question for you, Adam. Um, Daniil Hunter. You know, I just I want to get your perspective on him, you know, because you, you talk to other people across the league and you're monitoring free agency, and Daniil's a guy who's not going to hit free agency because the Vikings locked him up to a contract extension uh, last year. What have been your impressions of Daniil Hunter's career, a guy who's taken in the third round, kind of sat behind Everson Griffin and Brian Robinson, and now certainly has come into his own? Uh, have you been impressed with Daniil, and what do you, what do you foresee for Daniil in the next couple of seasons? 
Yeah, Ra, uh, Wabi, I, I got to tell you, Daniel Hunter was a guy, I remember going to training camp, and I had heard about him. Our good friend Paul Allen was telling me about him mm-hmm. to keep an eye on him. And my God, I mean, he's just, for, I mean, you, you look at it and you go, how in the world will this guy, not a first-round pick, he's got the length of just over 6'5". Mm-hmm. He's got tremendous pursuit skills. He's got the length, the speed, high character. They just nailed it. This is a home run. Um, there's no doubt about it. And his, his contract is enormous. I funny you mentioned him because I I'm going over 1,200 contracts for Hunter's not a free agent. I just want to look at his contract. Yeah. As I was looking over all the Viking contracts, and I was blown away by how strong the contract was. It's it's a, he deserves it. By the way, I mean the the Vikings rewarded him and, and rightfully so. That that's just a monster contract, and he deserves it. I mean the job that that. Rick Spielman has done, and, and George Payton in their front office, along with, with Coach Zimmer, developing this defense. It's just re- talk about ha- working hand in hand on on, on a yeah. on a bunch of players. It's just remarkable uh, how good he's become. And, and again, I, I I asked myself, this kid was good from day one, as you well know, working for the team and being in practice. I don't know why he wasn't. I, I don't know what his college production was at LSU. It was it was minimal. Goodness gracious, I mean, this this guy. He, he you know what's interesting? Yeah. You talk to NFL personnel people, they'll tell you, oh, my goodness, this guy's a really good football player, maybe even great. Fans across the country, Wabi, know very little about this guy. It's yeah. funny you asked about him. Yeah, yeah, and I think you're right, and that is why I, why I asked, you know, because I, I know that he's not someone you talk about regularly when you're doing all your various radio appearances and hosting on serious NFL radio, but may, maybe you will end up doing that here in, in the next year or two. Um, he had a very good season last season. Last question, part two, sorry. Um, Sheldon Richardson, Anthony Barr, either one of those back for the Vikings next year? Yeah, I mean, uh, they'd like to bring Barr back. Uh, it, it's going to come down to this. Could they strike a deal before free agency starts? If mm-hmm. not, then you're talking about a lot of teams like him. And you know, I know some teams like him as a stand-up 34 outside linebacker. You know, the, the Vikings run at 43. Uh, there was some thought when he came out of UCLA, would he be a 34 outside linebacker? Mm-hmm. He's very intriguing because this is not a great free agent class uh, of pass rushers. Now, his pass rush numbers obviously are not great. And that's why probably I, I don't want to put a, I don't want to put a percentage on it. I just think that why there's a possibility that he makes it, um, but we'll see. Uh, and Richardson's a guy that did a good job. Tom Johnson's also also up. That's the one position on defense that there's they don't have a lot of depth mm-hmm. with, with Richardson and Johnson being up. And Jalen Holmes is a kid who was drafted last year, fourth rounder, and Jaleel Johnson the year before, which you know, they could take a look at those guys. But that's a, the defensive tackle position is one that they're probably going to look at. In terms of adding depth, and we'll see what happens with Barr. He's if he if he does make it, he, he would be very intriguing because he's a young guy who I do believe is positional versatility for other teams. Yeah. All right. Well, we have combine, we have free agency, we have owners meetings, and we have the draft coming up, Adam. So you're going to be busy. We'll try and run you down here uh, in the next couple of weeks or months and see if we can get more insight from you. But as always, we appreciate your time today. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.